What is happening everybody? Another day, loads of headlines, loads of transfer stories, especially with a Chelsea team that's in poor form, losing games, players get linked, stories heat up, I'm here to report them to you. So what's going on everyone? Welcome back to Football Therapy with me, your host Jan. I hope you lot are doing well and welcome to the transfer news video. Today we're going to be talking about... One, dos, tres. Tres big transfer stories. The first being Frank Lampard is apparently interested in raiding, raiding, that's the transfer term, leads for their central defender, a young promising talent in January, which Leeds fans will love, you know, hating Frank Lampard from last season and all the narrative and all that. I'm going to be talking about those heavy links and what the player offers. Also, here's another big one. It's been reported by a couple of sources that actually doesn't matter how much he costs, Frank Lampard is actually interested in replacing goalkeeper Keparita Balaga in the summer. And finally, the great bidding war has begun. Jadon Sancho a Premier League return looks nailed on probably in the summer, but all of the big Premier League clubs, certainly the ones with money, are starting to rub their hands together. Now I'm bringing this up because Pep Guardiola apparently is prepared for City to make a £90 million bid. He might have to concede the Premier League title this season, but I have a feeling he won't run. He'll stay at City, he'll try a rebuild and he'll go with Sancho. I didn't think he'll go back, but United, Chelsea, Liverpool and City all in for him and we're going to be talking about that. If you're new to football therapy, remember, subscribe to the channel. Click the bell notifications icon once you've subscribed and why not like the video to help me out. And also, click the link in the top of the description to go visit Yan Plays, my gaming channel where I am about to start streaming Football Manager 20 live quite regularly. Loads of fun, I'll be managing Chelsea I assume. Right, 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 let's start off with today's first story. So Chelsea have been linked with a central defender this January winter window where they can make signings and it's the 22 year old Leeds central defender Ben White. Leeds fans absolutely hating Frank Lampard after the whole Spygate derby thing, remember? Stop crying Frank Lampard, which actually was quite a creative chant. Anyway, their stomachs will turn at the thought of this transfer. Apparently Chelsea Chelsea are prepared to pay £25 million to the championship club, which is a lot of money if you're a championship club. The kind of money that would make you actually sell one of your best players to a team that you don't particularly like and have like, or the coach certainly, and have a bad relationship with. You know, that's the kind of sum that pulls players out of the championship, like James Madison vibes, you know? Leeds have kept 12 clean sheets in the championship this season, five more than the next best defensive team, and he's had a lot to do with that. The young defender makes 4.3 tackles and interceptions per game, which is very impressive. Great defensive stat there. He also makes 3.2 clearances per game, and who scored have given him a very high rating as a central defender, and I think, if Chelsea are going to be doing loads of last ditch defending, he would be a really good suitor. He'd obviously fit the profile of another young up and coming English footballer and you know he's been defending down in the championship, he knows how to deal with the dirtiness. But really, does this make sense? Sure there's a big argument that Chelsea still need a central defender, even with the introduction or reintroduction of Antonio Rudiger but probably they're lacking leadership qualities in that area. The truth is, even when Chelsea lost 1-0 to Bournemouth, both Kurt Zuma and Antonio Rudiger were really good defensively. Both of them made loads of good last-ditch tackles, they had good recovery pace, tackles in the penalty area, interceptions out of the penalty area. Really, it was a play and open play that let them down, linking up with the team and the creativity of the whole team. But the goal Chelsea conceded was a very, very weird one. It was just keeping a little bit of a high line, I guess. I think Mason Mount might have been playing him on. Really, the central defenders did nothing wrong in that game against Bournemouth, except maybe offensively. Still, Chelsea have Zuma, who's a good player. They have Fikayo Tomori, who's just signed a new five-year deal. Good promising player, the future for Chelsea. They have Antonio Rudiger, good player. They have Christensen, who's a talented young central defender. He's proved that at Borussia Mönchengladbach. He's proved that under Conte at Chelsea, even under Sarri at times. Frank Lampard's obviously looking at him, but he might not be the one for Frank Lampard's Chelsea. So do they bring in this young lad and have him as another sort of rotational fourth centre back? Or do they go in big in the summer and get like a big name that's a leader? Still watch this space. I'll of course keep you guys updated on football therapy 
and let you know as the window comes ever closer to opening. It slams shut, so what happens when it opens? Does it slam open? You know the terms, window slam, don't. Anyway, let's move on. Right, this is a big banger of a story. Apparently, Frank Lampard isn't impressed with Kepa Aretha Balaga, and he wants him to be replaced in the summer. I personally have some thoughts on this and will express my opinion in a moment. Kepa has only saved 56% of the shots he's faced this season. Now, although he's looked poor in a few games, notably, uh, and definitely made some nervy mistakes in terms of passing the ball out. That statistic of safe shots he's faced, a lot of it is can be unfair because Chelsea plays such an expansive direct brand of football, it often leaves the defensive third exposed and a lot of when people are through one-on-one, -on -one, or there's two players through and they can square the ball to take a shot on, really the goalkeeper, there's nothing you can do. And you know, certain he actually has faced a lot of wonder goals this season. Believe it or not, you know the goals that come in under the crossbar or like posting in or deflected and it's an own goal. He has been rather unlucky in a lot of senses with that in terms of goals he can't essentially save. But he's the world's most expensive goalkeeper and he's been shaky at times this season. So let's look at the truisms of this subject. He is the world's most expensive goalkeeper. But that's because Chelsea triggered a, re like a release clause, a buyout clause. Real Madrid had been scouting Kepa. Chelsea had been scouting Kepa. Very talented young keeper. Now we know that. We've seen him do good distribution when he's feeling comfortable. He can knock a ball up the pitch quite accurately. He can do. He's a very, very good keeper off his line. He comes out and sweeps well, or he like claims well. When he's feeling good, he's very talented. He's obviously a very, very good footballing goalkeeper. His pass percentage is very good. And although maybe he lacks a couple of inches in height, I think he's only 6'1", which sounds tall. I'm 6'1", I'm just shy of it. But goalkeepers are generally very tall. So maybe he can't reach the far, far corners when doing a diving save. But he's got cat-like reflexes. We've seen wonder saves from Kepa. We've seen last-minute saves from Kepa that saved Chelsea points. And we've seen him save penalties. I was at the semi-final last season when he did the two penalty saves to take Chelsea through to the Europa League final, which they went on and won. Both those saves were excellent and very, very impressive. So we know he can do it, but it's not about knowing someone can do it. It's about doing it all the time, or certainly not making silly mistakes. The thing is, right, Kepa probably, when Chelsea bought him, should have been worth, I don't know, 30 million euros maybe, not even pounds, or actually it's about the same now. I don't know, 25 million to 35 million. If Chelsea sold Courtois for 35 million, which they did, and brought in Kepa for 35 million, that would have been fine. You would have actually been very, very impressed with some of his good performances with that price tag. But the whole buyout clause thing shouldn't reflect, you know, his ability or shouldn't put the pressure on him. Still, regardless to his ability, Frank Lampard, I think he wants a lot of trust in his goalkeeper. And it's been reported that he does want a replacement as things stand. It's also been reported that he won't have anything to do with scouting or looking at it. He's you know, concedes to the fact of that's not his expertise, maybe we'll leave that to better check, but he does, as it stands, want to look into that. But watch this space, if it is true, you know, Kepa's got a lot of proving to do in the meantime, I'll of course keep you guys updated on football therapy, be sure to check in every single day. Now finally, it has begun, the battle for Jadon Sancho. <laughs> right. I was chatting to my mate, I was chatting on football therapy to you guys before and to like colleagues and football people talking about, you know, Jaden Sancho, boyhood Chelsea fan, idolises Frank Lampard, besties of Hudson Adoy, grew up with Tammy Abraham, is from London, probably likes the young English lad project at Chelsea, nailed on he goes to Manchester United. It's gonna come down to a money thing. I said he won't wanna, again, maybe convincing Chelsea fans out loud he won't want to go to Liverpool because there's no way he's going to break into that front three um, because they're all in their prime they play so well together I said there's no way he'll be going back to City because he left to get away from City to you know even if he has no particular bad blood even if people speculate there is bad blood you just don't go back do you know what I mean although Chelsea Nathan Eke Anyway, apparently Pep Guardiola is willing to make a £90 million bid on Sancho. Now, this is interesting, right? Guardiola, usually, he creates like a sort of, not a dynasty, but he develops like a monopoly in a league, whether it be like, you know, Real Madrid, Real Madrid, Barcelona. But when he lost to Jose's Real Madrid, he threw his cards on the table when he left. He's obviously going to lose to Liverpool this season. Liverpool are going to win the league. But is Pep Guardiola going to leave or is he going to stay? 
I think he'll stay and try and rebuild and go again because he has to rebuild a city now. He's got amazing players, but it is looking like a sort of rebuild project. So if he is serious, Jadon Sancho is that elite player, and he is that elite player. He's got 10 goals and 10 assists now. He's the first player in Europe's five top leagues to do that in just 19 appearances. That's 20 goal contributions in 19 appearances. The goal contribution per minute is probably really low. I haven't looked it up, I probably should have, but it'll be really low because he won't be playing 90 minutes per game either. And he was supposed to have been in poor form this season, or certainly for a spell at the beginning, so he is elite. He did it all last season. He broke the record for the youngest player to get to 15 goals in the Bundesliga. He's doing it again, he's a baller, he's worth the money, everyone is in for him. Where does he go? It's actually going to be a really exciting story. Could he go back to City? Because it is, if he, if he gets in his contract, you'll play, you'll be starting player. You know, you're going to be playing on the flanks with Raheem Sterling, like you do for England. A new super informed Gabriel Jesus is playing up front, you'll definitely start, we're going to win everything again you can be a part of that if liverpool are the champions of england you know recently won the champions league hell they might win the champions league again he might think damn liverpool are the best team in the world i can go there i can you know stake my claim for a place in the starting 11. Yeah. obviously chelsea is a difficult one they really need to finish in the top four if they want to try and keep their hat in the ring in terms of getting Sancho but I still think there's a lot of reasons why I'd want to come to Chelsea but in terms of a European superpower the other two have obviously got the edge on Chelsea still but then again it's been reported that Manchester United are winning the race for Sancho I mean they've got loads of money they seem to make things happen with just money they're still you know obviously a very very big club man United and the badge means something so what's gonna happen man the race is very much on and <laughs> I'll keep you updated but I fear the worst in terms of him going to one of the strongest teams. Still, a lot can happen throughout the season. Right, that's it for the transfer video, guys. Get down in the comments. Let me know your thoughts and opinions on the stories I've spoken about in this video. Make sure you go subscribe to Yam Plays and watch me play Football Manager. It's going to be loads of fun. The link is in the top of the description. Please do click it. Also, follow me on social media at Football Yannick on both Twitter and Instagram at Football Yannick. That's enough for me, guys. You lot enjoy the football, and I will see you later. You ain't so tough with that bad boy tuck I'ma get it how I'm living, I'ma walk the walk Outline my lines, I rap through thought Body bag the verse, outline the chuck In my life seen trouble, hustle on the double Silence on the trigger like my pick got a muzzle Yo chick like to guzzle, bad boy stay in trouble I only love this paper, sorry I don't I love me,